It's amazing. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode, as we do every Sunday right here on our Corvette channel. It's Coffee with Conti. Although you looked at today's vlog and you went, man, this is a monster long vlog. We need a coffee pot with Conti. Regardless, you guys took the time to join us. Thank you so much. Thank you to Gary in Texas. Just bought a 19 Elkhart Lake Blue Z06 from us. It was kind of funny because he goes, he goes, hey, I really enjoy your vlog series. He goes, but I really like the Sunday Coffee with Conti. He goes, it reminds me when I was a little kid. Looking forward to the Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. I really do appreciate that. See, I'm not just a big kid on the channel. I get it. I understand. We're in this together. I'll tell you what. And the best connection you're going to have to the Corvette community is right here on this channel. So I appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Thumbs up this video when you're done seeing it because I, I, I just know today you're going to love it. And even though I don't reply to all the comments, I do read them all and I learn from you guys. In fact, that's kind of what spawned today's vlog. It was somebody that watches the channel I was having a conversation with and someone that I actually call a friend now. It's kind of crazy. We, it seems like we've known each other forever. Hey, Pete, what's up in Michigan? And we were talking about, you know, my tenure in the business. You know, it's 24 years I've been selling cars. I started in 95. Had a lot of fun that first year. It's like, oh, boy. And then I decided to stay in the business. Oh, boy. And then I was like, okay, in 96, I said, if I'm going to stay in this business, what a special, this, you know, stand out there, hey, can I help you? My gosh, I, I'm like, I'm not that guy. I don't want to be that guy. So I decided I was going to specialize in Corvette. I felt that the customer needed that. I felt the market needed a specialist. So I'm excited to be that guy for you guys. So thank you so much. So Pete and I were talking, you know, about my tenure and about some of the marketing stuff that I've encountered with Chevrolet and some TV commercials and things like that, or they're the lack of, which we're going to talk about in today's show. And he goes, hey man, that'd be a, be a good episode. Why don't you, why don't you talk about that? So that's what we're going to do today. But to get started, let's talk about C8. I've got all kinds, there's been all stuff out there on the internet right now. My friends at CorvetteBlogger.com did a nice story. Midage and Corvette Forum did a nice story. And guys are calling me, texting me, emailing, saying, Rick, what do you think? You haven't talked about it on the channel. I figured this, the Sunday Coffee with Conti seems to get a lot more attention. So let me address the production start rumors of C8 car that everybody's talking about in December. Um, I think there's, um, let me just say, I think there's some meat and potatoes to that. Oh, yeah! Uh, now the question becomes, okay, production's going to start at the end of the year. When is the reveal? Okay, we're, we're, again, we could go on in tangents forever on that. We've done it already. That plays into exactly what we talked about last week. I told you guys, it's at least, at least a year before any of you behind the wheel driving that C8 car. So you, you need to get your arms around that and prepare your purchases accordingly. So if they build in December, there'll be a natural hold, ba ba ba. So you're probably looking at a January, February release. That's at least a year, could be a little bit longer. As things develop in C8, I'll definitely let you know. And we will, we'll do a special blog just featured only on C8. Another question that comes up often, they say, Rick, you don't show a lot of those renders from mid-engine Corvette form that the other guys are showing and, and things like that. We do from time to time. I think, you know, because like I said, I'm a retailer, you guys rely on me to give you good information. There's so, there's so much craziness out there right now. Your head's just gonna spin if it's not spinning already in regards to the C8 car. A lot of information that has been given out there has been wrong, but I can't address those specific points because then I break the confidence of the people that I've been talking to. But uh, the one thing I'll tell you, you know, I didn't, I guess I just didn't want to represent that car and keep, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, this Chaz Cron and all these other guys doing these renders, I mean, wow, huge talent, wonderful. Gives us an idea of what the car's gonna look like. But guys, I've been doing this exclusively with Corvette since 96, and let me tell you something. They've not changed their game plan yet, okay? I got the playbook. I know the playbook. They've shown it several times. Have you not been paying attention? The curve ball's coming. So when the cover comes off, you're going to go, oh, oh, well, that wasn't, that's not, oh, that, that's, oh, so that, so that's the, hmm. <laughs> I want you to base your decision on fact. It's a good thing in anything in life, let alone a Corvette purchase. So if you're basing, you know, if I did too much of showing those those renders and showing more spy shots, knowing what I know now, I'm really, <laughs> I mean, I got caught up in it too, guys, big time. I regret spending the money that I spent to bring you some of those pictures. I do. I just like, because I know now that the car you're going to see revealed is not that exact car. There is, there, the Chevy curveball is coming but it'll be a good one, but it's not, 
if, if, you know, I guess I don't want you to make your decision based on what you see because if you say, hey, I don't like that car, don't decide yet because that's not the final thing, all right? So stay tuned for more on C8. Hey, another thing I'm getting ready to send on Monday, I'm always thinking outside the box, so I got this creative idea. This is going to segue into what we're going to be talking about. Um, to do something different on the vlog, um, and I'm talking to Chevy that they're going to have to put their guard down big time. I, I might share the email with you. I'll definitely share the idea. Just let me get into it next week. Let me finish drafting the email and send it out to some of the executives at Corvette and see how they respond. Um, I think... I, yeah, I, th I think it's time for something different, and I think it'll be a huge, huge hit. So today I kind of want to look back at not just my career, but Corvette in general. Marketing that Chevrolet's done with us, for us, to present the car to you folks. Also, Corvette commercials. I mean, let's face it, there's... <laughs> I mean, we're at the day and age right now that I think TV commercials, Corvette TV commercials are... Don't count on it. Maybe we'll start to see some teasers uh, on C8 when it gets closer like we did in C7. We got a lot of that to share with you today on the show. So I'm going to share some old commercials. And I've got one commercial that I know everybody loves. If you have a 2005 Corvette or had one or at least have a 2005 brochure, you know what commercial I'm talking about. And I'm going to share a segment that many of you have never seen before. And you go, wow, that's pretty cool. And it's kind of a bummer that that commercial's banned. So we're going to get into that and talk about some other things where Corvette was actually used in commercials. But when you see one on TV, you kind of just sit up and say, hey, shh, be quiet, there's a Corvette commercial. Everybody wants to watch. I mean, it just captivates you. I remember at one point we did a radio commercial uh, six, seven years ago. Uh, and I ran it only on ESPN Radio. The first phone call I sold a ZR1 to, because a guy said he about drove off the road. He heard a Corvette radio only commercial that you just don't hear. But it, it goes to show you how much Corvette captivates all of our attention. So back in 1996, and I didn't, you know, I rewatched this tape the other night, then I'm going to share a segment with you guys. And I didn't realize how significant it was. I was just, I was just so high on life and just so excited. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, we had an opportunity. Talk about letting your guard down and doing things differently. I mean, you see where we're at right now. You can't get close to the C8 car. You know, hey, no, cover this up, cover that up. We got to go. Only 10% of the dealers in the country got to go to Miami and drive the 97 Corvette before it was revealed in the media, before it was in a magazine, before they had it at the car shows. We're in the car, not just seeing the car. We're in the car and we're driving the car. That event wasn't just a thrill. It's even more of an honor as I look back and some of that I'm gonna share with you today on the vlog. And we're there, you're not supposed to be there. In fact, let me share this with you. This is what I call, <laughs> there was a lady from Texas there uh, and this is what I call an actual, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see what I wrote down there on the bottom? It's an actual spy photo. You see her shadow? The security was so stringent. They said, if you don't have your badge when you get on the bus going to Homestead Raceway, you're not going, and we're leaving at this time, period. And there was one guy, he's right, he's like, oh, I forgot my thing, I gotta go back to the room. They said, nope, bye-bye. <laughs> and they left them there. No cameras. This lady brings a camera and you can see you can see her. Look real close. See how her arms are? She's holding up. She's got one of these little cameras. She had a little fanny pack thing there. You can see. We're in the racetrack. Everybody, you can see. This is not like inconspicuous, like down low. Taking a picture. No. Hey, let me take a picture. Bam. And they walk up. Give me that camera. And they, they took the camera from her. And they did send it to her after the event was over and after the car was revealed to the public. And she was kind enough to send me the picture. So we didn't have digital back then. I've actually printed this off, but it still turned out pretty cool. So this is my first spy shot of a Corvette. And here it's uncovered. I mean, this was so significant. Nobody knew what this car looked like. It was neat. I was just surprised that Chevy did that. So here's a little more uh, little more highlights. Here's my little badge. Here's a little Corvette. Can you see that? I'm sorry. Can you see that Corvette Specialist badge from 1997? A little letter. Here we are at the hotel. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I wish I had some time for golfing. And look at that. 100% on the test. That's right. I was so excited. I was just so pumped for this new Corvette. I mean, the whole market was. We talked about it endless times. C5, because that's what we were at, the C5 launch. C5 saved Corvette and got us to where we are today and where we're going in the future. Oh my gosh, hang on guys. All right, so talking about marketing, this is the training tape that went out to all the dealers that couldn't attend the event that we were at. 
anything that come to the dealership that was Corvette related, they would just give to me and I would throw in my office. And I, I, I didn't even watch it. I had the thing for like seven, eight months. There it is, the old VHS tape for the 97 C5 launch Corvette. So they show the event and some highlights on this tape. So I was at a Chevy event somewhere else and somebody goes, hey, I recognize you. Recognize me from what? I just like I'm just kind of new in the in the business. What are you talking about? He goes. He goes. You're on the Chevy training tape. I go, what training tape? He goes for the '97 Corvette. I said, really? As soon as I get back to the office, I pop this thing in and I watched it. And uh, I'm a complete idiot. <laughs> I couldn't even put a sentence together. So here I am. I just keep in mind. I just drove the '97 Corvette. That was monumental. I am just like freaking out. And this guy comes in and says, what do you think of the Corvette? Here's my stupid answer. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's more exciting words than I can say on this tape, but I'll tell you what. It's, uh, it's almost speechless to, to a certain extent. Yep, I couldn't even put two sentences together to even express how I was feeling, and I guess they understood that. I guess that's why I made the date. But man, that event was so monumental. I was so proud to be there. Man, I just got done driving the new 97 Corvette, rode in a car with John Paul Jr. at 155 miles an hour. So my sales manager at the time is Mike Noble. We're on the plane, we're flying back to Cleveland, and I'm, I'm just talking about the event. I, I'm just so excited. I, I just can't wait to get to work and all the plans and all the marketing I wanted to do to share Corvette and promote Corvette for you guys, with you guys. And he looks over at me and he just, he smiles and he goes, you're really into this, aren't you? I said, oh yeah. I said, I'm just, I, 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 again, I couldn't even express to him how excited I was, but he knew it. And he goes, you really are Rick Corvette. He goes, you're, he goes, you're Rick Corvette Conti. I said, man, I love it. That's great. And, and, and then the marketing campaign just bing, bing, bing kicked in. He too was really excited about what this car was. Here's what Mike said when he got off the track and they showed the camera in his face. Of course, Mike was a little more eloquent than I was. It's the finest sports car I think anybody here has ever driven in their life. It's not hard to get excited about the 1997 Corvette. As the Chevrolet dealers and salespeople you just heard from can attest, they were among those from Chevrolet's 402 top selling Corvette dealerships who participated in the 1997 Corvette Specialist Seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived. Let's drop the tarps and let's greet the 97 Chevrolet Corvette. The new Corvette was unveiled to the public on January 6, 1997 in a simultaneous satellite link-up between the North American International Auto Show in Detroit and the Los Angeles Auto Show. The excitement of this event helped Corvette grab headlines and newscasts across the country, announcing to the world that the legend lives. So this is the 97 dealer press kit. The dealer only got one if you're one of the dealers to actually get one of these cars. Uh, for some reason, we got two of these. One stayed at the dealership. This one I actually just opened for today's vlog. It never been open until today. Uh, it's got all kinds of stuff inside here. Put this paper down over here. I think there's a VHS tape in there and all that. And then all kinds of pages that, again, have still not been opened. It was pretty neat. I mean, this was a monumental time for Chevrolet and for Corvette. And the way that Chevrolet marketed the car to us was just fantastic. You know, when I was talking to Pete, you know, when I look back in the years, I remember, you know, some of the some of the brochures would come with CDs or the owner's manuals would come with, you know, operational CDs and things like that. They just don't do that stuff anymore. I mean, we are more internet based, but the tangibles are fantastic. Guys, it's great to have you here for another Coffee with Conti Sunday Corvette vlog. We're talking about Corvette marketing now, stuff that I've been involved in, stuff that I remember that's impacted my career over 24 years I want to share with you now. You don't really recall a whole lot of TV commercials, but as we get into the C5 era, there you might, I'll show you this one right now, you might remember this one, a little tongue in cheek, they kind of made a little mysterious about the C5 Corvette getting ready to hit the market. Get him down here. Talk to me. Road testing Stuttgart, monitor six. Lateral G's point nine three. What's been? Mass power one five zero. Push in five hundred percent. Pushing in five hundred percent. Speed one six zero and climbing. What the hell is going on? We're tracking them. Enhance that. 
The C5 Corvette was so popular, other companies were using the Corvette in their commercials to boost the attention to their product. Now, this one's not very good resolution. I mean, we're going back <laughs> over 20 years, guys. But I thought it was funny real quick, this internet commercial. Uh, you may have seen this one before. Check it out. Wow. Wow ist richtig, denn bei Dish Network gibt es jetzt zwei Satellitenempfänger umsonst, inklusive professioneller Installation. Now let's not forget when C6 was getting ready to launch, it was the American Revolution theme. You did see some of these commercials on TV and you saw a lot on the internet. And it was more than just Corvette, they were promoting the Chevy brand. Uh, I wish I had better resolution of this one, but this was a great spot. Once the C6 was out, even though it was controversial, it did gain a lot of popularity. They started using in the commercials other Chevy brands to kind of cross-promote each other. Despite genetic similarities, siblings often harbor tension between each other. This can result in provocation against the older counterpart. These are merely attempts to discover his place in the family. Cobalt, the new commotion coming to the Chevy family. And as we got toward the end of the era of C6, I love these next two spots, one for the 60th anniversary of Corvette and one for the big daddy, the ZR1. Check these out. maker turns one of its models into a race car they have to add power but when Chevrolet wanted to race the 638 horsepower Corvette ZR1 against Porsche Ferrari and BMW we were asked to dial it back oh about 168 horsepower you know just to be fair
once upon a time, a bunch of guys got together with a crazy idea. Go farther, faster than mankind ever had before. They dreamt with their hands, shaped aluminum with their brains, and the world watched and waited with bated breath. While time has marched on and priorities have changed, it's nice to know America still builds rockets. The 2011 Corvette, only from Chevrolet. What do you guys need a refill? Yeah, me too. I'll grab one here in just a second. Let's keep the show going. Our Sunday edition of Coffee with Conti right here on the Corvette Vlog. Thanks for joining us. Kind of reminiscing back at some of the marketing that I remember of Chevrolet, TV ads, internet ads, stuff that I experienced at different events. Just excited to share that with you guys. Now, this next spot I want to share with you is not necessarily a commercial, but it certainly tells the life story, the dream, and the passion for a Corvette. This one you're going to love. Now, wasn't that perfect? I mean, I think all of us could relate to that. Some of us are still living that. Some just waiting to break open that jar. That was great creativity. Speaking of which, Michael Brown Productions were auditioning to have their commercial, a Corvette commercial, to be in the Super Bowl. It didn't make it. They were real close in the final cut there. And I just, I love this. This is one that you saw on the internet. It was, again, never a TV ad, but it was an ad for Corvette. It was so well done. Another one that will just kind of make you chuckle. Nice job, Michael. Check this one out. This is, it takes a Chevy to catch a Chevy. It takes a Chevy to catch a Chevy. Now, as a Chevrolet sales representative, I've been privy to go to so many launch events as they bring out a new generation. Those hands-on training events, I mean, hats off, top-notch from Chevrolet. We learned so much. I learned more on those hands-on experiences than I did ever in the printed data. And I would say the same thing every time. <laughs> I would go from, from C4 to C5. I'd be like, wow, I can't believe there's that much room for improvement. C6, wow, I can't believe there's that much room for improvement. This is amazing. C7, wow, I can't believe there's that much room for improvement. Just absolutely incredible how the game continues to just be stepped up and improved. 
who knows what we're about to embark on with C8. I can't wait for that event, and I hope that the guard comes down a little bit, that we're actually able to share some of that with you guys. And if I can film when the C8 comes out, I know they'll do an event, I would like to film that for you guys. Now, as we approach C7, oh my gosh, one of the most anticipated Corvettes ever was truly C7. You guys have no idea what a great value story you have in front of you right now. Seriously, appreciate this car. And I don't think that these, these spots I'm about to share with you ever actually made it to air as TV ads. Uh, again, we're to the day and age now that they're really utilizing, this is more cost effective, they're utilizing the internet. And there's so many of these little teaser spots that popped up that were just like, and then we would freeze frame, freeze frame, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. <laughs> I can't even tell how many times it's freeze frame, blowing it up, trying to look at this stuff to figure out this car before it was launched. Check out the series of teaser ads for the C7 Corvette. The exterior excites you, it draws you in, but the interior is where you actually experience the car from. It's literally the connection that you have to the car, so it has to be perfect. Every gram has to earn its way onto the car. Everything has to be rebalanced and reconsidered so that you get this appropriate ballet to bring it all together. You don't feel like you're trying to drive to the car, you feel like the car is doing exactly what you want it to do. You're just making the car right for the road you're on. No compromises. Cars are definitely all about form follows function. But I would say beautiful form follows performance driven function.
Well, Chevrolet continued to utilize the internet to promote C7 when they launched the Grand Sport. And after you see the reveal of the Grand Sport spot, check out Oliver Gavin promoting Grand Sport on the track. This is the best Corvette family that's ever been produced. It's the look of the car, it's the cooling, it's the aerodynamics, it's the brakes, it's customizable. My name is Oliver Gavin and I drive for Corvette Racing in the number four C7R. So the Grand Sport taken the best bits of the Stingray and the Z06 and they've put it together and they've got this wonderful package. You've got all of those things that have helped give that car that sportier edge, that greater performance, that ability to perform lap after lap after lap. What the Grand Sport offers you in terms of choices, whether it's the colours or the interior, the look of the car, the wheels or, or the brakes, it's customisable. It's given me all the same feedback that the race car does. So the way that you feel the car on the brakes and the way that the other car then turns in, it just feels like it's all under you, the control that you have. You really are getting that interaction and, and that same level of feedback from this car as you would get from the race car. What a wonderful machine. Now speaking of Oliver Gavin, Chevrolet used him and the Corvette Z06 just to promote the capabilities of the car and show off. This is fantastic. Check this out if you haven't seen it yet. Six and start position, avoid some bars. 
it seems like that the promotion of C7, the commercials that were just on the internet, maybe some that hit the TV, was more at the beginning of the launch of C7. Here is an actual Chevrolet commercial for the Stingray. You need a machine. A machine that lives and breathes. Something you don't start. Something you awaken. Unleash. And then believe in. To find the line. To thread the needle. Something engineered to respond in an instant. To adapt and react. You need a machine so sharp if you had to make a snap decision right now between heartbeats, it would deliver. Meet your machine. And here's another Chevrolet commercial for the Stingray, and I like this one has a little smack toward its competition. This one's called Bad Dream. What do cars dream about when they fall asleep? Your dreams is the car from their nightmares. Introducing the new 2014 Corvette Stingray. You guys having fun today? I am too. Thanks a lot for taking the time to join us, kind of reminisce some of these different marketing things that GM's presented Corvette to us, most of which has been of recent on the internet. Here's another Stingray spot. It's called Showdown. A little more of a sinister, kind of a Batman-ish, Marvel Comics type thing. Kind of weird. <laughs> Check this one out. Stir more than your subconscious. The all-new 2014 Corvette Stingray. Chevrolet, find new roads. Guys, I'm not telling you anything you don't know already, but C7 Corvette is so popular, especially when it first hit the marketplace. And going forward, you're gonna see that C7 is definitely something real special. Okay, video games were even using the Corvette to promote their product. And I guess the most recent thing you have for C7 that we got over a year ago were the teaser ads 
for the 2019 ZR1. Oh yeah, there's nobody better to tease us than Chevrolet when it comes to Corvette. That's why I say, get ready for the curveball on the C8 Minage and Corvette. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. What's that? You're going, hey Rick, you, you didn't play? Come on, man. I saved the best for last. And something that many of you have never seen before. I mentioned at the beginning of the vlog, if you had a 2005 Corvette brochure this CD was in it there's actually a documentary on here that I might share in a separate episode in the future uh, let me look at it again and see if it's something I think you guys enjoy then we'll put it up there but on here is the commercial that I think is one of the best of all time for Corvette of course it instills that little kid in us and also emphasizes the dream and the accomplishment and the reward that Corvette is you guys think people are sensitive today oh my gosh you guys were going back in 2005 a long time ago as soon as that ad aired all the safety advocates came out and said even though it said at the beginning of the of the thing the boys dream commercial this is a dream sequence they pulled that commercial because they thought that Chevrolet was sending the wrong message to 12 and 13 year olds that they were just gonna hop in a Corvette and go cruising around I did record that commercial off the computer so you guys could see it. It's so hard to find a good resolution of that. So maybe it looks a little bit better. The audio is going to be a little bit off. But after you see the spot, many of you have, you know, they're new to Corvette. You say, well, I've never seen that. That's a great ad. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm bummed that they actually pulled the ad. But after that, I want to show you what I said that many of you have never seen that was on the CD in the 2005 Corvette brochure is actually how they made the commercial. That's pretty intriguing as well. Check these out. This is the new 2005 Corvette. This is a kid with an incredible imagination. And this is how far that imagination will take you. This is a look at a boy's dream, the new television campaign for the all-new Corvette, brought to life by famed film director Guy Ritchie. Filming for a boy's dream began June 20, 2004, shooting in New York City. A boy's dream is the story of first love and love at first sight between a boy and, well, this car. Ask Corvette enthusiasts, and they can probably tell you about the very first time they saw a Corvette as a child, and about the day they swore to own one. For this boy, that day came in a dream before he can see over the dashboard, and in his dream, he finally gets behind the wheel of a car that can do almost anything. And in this boy's mind, the Corvette does just that. Everything. Much of the magic is created with superimposed images at a green screen studio and with a computer generated Corvette as a stand in for some unusual driving scenes. The special effects create the illusion of a boy behind the wheel. As you can see, 
This young actor had to imagine himself in various driving situations and react to a world that doesn't exist. For close-up shots, a computer-generated car was built around our little driver weeks after the shoot. Over seven hours of footage was shot, only to be cut down to a mere 60 seconds. Editing the commercial was actually longer than the shoot, 31 days. It was a marathon effort for the production to meet its deadline with such an ambitious concept. Fortunately, the production team moves just as well as the car, and the commercial spot debuted during the opening ceremonies of the 2004 Summer Olympics. Just think, it's out there somewhere, prowling the streets. The new 2005 Chevy Corvette, the official car of your dreams. Well, gang, we really are done with the vlog now. Lots of fun, passion, creativity, all promoting Corvette. Who knows what the future holds for us? But I've just, in my heart, I know it's not going to disappoint. Thanks for joining us on this channel. Support this channel. Subscribe to it. Thumbs up the video. Leave a comment down below. I can't wait to see you on the next vlog. Thanks again, guys. Have a good day.